Welcome to the Faith Worship Center broadcast. I'm Pastor Derek Thomas, and today I don't have my girlfriend with me. Uh, she's back at the office taking care of some things I think that's so important. Getting prepared for you to come visit us. But today I prepared a message in the area of forgiveness. And I know you're going to enjoy this message today. Maybe a little painful, maybe uh, something that's going to cause you to examine yourself. But today's message is going to be something uh, so vital, I think, that it's going to change your life. So listen, I want you to go in. I want you to pay close attention to what uh, I'm going to say today to you. And then at the end of the broadcast, I got a special offer that I want to send to you totally free. So let's go into the broadcast. We'll see you then. Again, welcome to the Faith Worship Center broadcast. I'm Pastor Derek Thomas. What an awesome opportunity it is to have you with us today as we discuss some things that I think that's going to be very vital uh, and important uh, to your life. You know, I heard a story not too long ago about a little girl, and a uh, little girl was talking about uh, how she, how much she loved broccoli. And so, as she was sitting around with some some people, and they're sitting around the table, they said, "Hey, well, you know, let's let's get ready to eat." And so they're passing the chicken around, passing the macaroni and cheese around, and as they were passing the macaroni and cheese around. The next thing we're passing around was broccoli. And so they get the broccoli and they pass it around to her. And she says, no, I don't think I have it. And they said, but I thought you loved broccoli. She said, I do. I just don't love it that much. Well, guess what? Today, you know, when we talk about this area of forgiveness that we've been talking about, I got to get you to a point where you start loving people like you're supposed to. Because some people, you know, when they hurt you, when things have happened in your life or, or things have come against you, come on, you still love them, but you don't love them as much. Come on. <laughs> kind of like broccoli, you know, you want to put some uh, cheese on them. You want to put some, uh, uh, boil them till you can't boil them anymore and salt and pepper and everything. And before you know it, it's not broccoli. Well, that's kind of how our love has become in certain areas. And a lot of time it's because we hadn't forgiven that person. So I want to pray. And then after we pray, we're going to go in and we're going to start talking about this area of forgiveness. So let us pray. Father, I thank you and I bless you today. God, I, I give you praise for all of the things that you've done, Lord. We know that it's because of you, Lord, that we're here today. And so I just thank you for the people of God that are watching today. We ask that your spirit would come into this room and into the place where they are. And then, God, I ask that you don't let me preach anything I don't live. Let me be a man of integrity who walks in the fear of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But listen, I want to talk to you today about this thing called forgiveness because forgiveness is such a vital thing. Uh, it's such a part of our life because it doesn't matter who you are, all of us at one point in time have been hurt before. You've had some issues to happen in your life where it just wasn't comfortable. Now, for some of us and some things we may have done, uh, some things we deserve because we've done some things. And I said us. Notice I didn't just say you. I'm talking about all of us. But then there are some things that happen in life you just didn't deserve. It just happened to happen to you. Maybe somebody did you wrong. Maybe somebody lied on you. Maybe somebody did something or said something that wasn't pleasant. And you say, you know what, God, I didn't ask for that. Well, listen, today, uh, I, I got to get you to get over that thing because when you walk around in an area of unforgiveness, there are certain things that, that happen that you have to stop. Number one, when, when forgiveness is not in place, you get held up at that point where uh, unforgiveness is. And let me give you a prime example. Let's take, for instance, somebody comes up to you and um, in the midst of them coming up to you, uh, you're dealing with them and all of a sudden they offend you. And then all of a sudden when they offend you, all of a sudden you held that thing in your heart, even though the person may have said that they're sorry, uh, and depending on the level of the offense, uh, you know, it, it depends on uh, how, how you took that thing. And so lo and behold, uh, because it was somebody who was near and dear to you, uh, that thing kind of resonated in your heart because when it comes to unforgiveness, you know, there's certain people you, that can say certain things to you, <laughs> you know, they can say certain things to you. And if you really don't care about that person, you don't care what they think. You know, they can say anything. They can talk about your mama. They can talk about your daddy. And you can just say, you know what? That's cool. That's cool. I don't care. But let it be somebody who's near and dear to your heart. 
and that person who was near and dear to your heart, if they say something to you, man, that thing just kind of sits on your heart. Some, for some of us, it gets us angry and gets us mad and it gets us to the point where we can't hardly function like we need to. Glory to God. Listen, what I got to get you to understand is I really got to get us uh, to understand uh, as the people that are watching this broadcast today is that you don't want to be held up in time because what happens is at that point, you may go in with the rest of your life, but because that offense has happened, you are stopped at that point. I mean, you, you, you're held up at that point where you can't go any further. You try to go further, but every time you see that person, something rises up in your heart and you get mad. You get angry because they hurt you, because they dealt with you the wrong way, because you don't like the way that that situation happened. And now you got that feeling on you and you just you just really upset about what's going on. But listen, I got to get you to understand something today. Look, regardless of who it may be, you control your own life. And because you control your own life, you, you, you have to, to, to begin to, to gravitate towards those things of God. Because if you don't, listen, you can't move forward in your life. You may say, you know what, I've gone to college and I've done this and I've, got, I've accomplished this. I've got a brand new job. I've got a lot of money and all this other kind of stuff. But you still got that one thing you hold it in your heart because somebody offended you and you hadn't forgiven them over the years. Listen, you got to get that thing right. Look, today, that's why you're watching the broadcast. Because you say, you know what, now, look, I know you watch the broadcast because I'm beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that too, yeah. But that's not why you're watching today. Today you're watching because God has a divine assignment for you. And in order to get that divine assignment, you got to forgive that person and you got to move on in life. I got something I want to share with you. You know, um, I can remember uh, when I was a kid, my brothers, we, it's, it's, it was uh, uh, eight of us, excuse me, eight children total uh, at the time. And I was the youngest out of eight children. And I can remember uh, a situation where we were out swimming and, and you know, <laughs> me and the youngest, I told them, y'all don't take me, I'm going to tell mom and dad. And so they called me the one who always, you know, telling everybody and everything. I don't care. That's all right. I, you know. <laughs> at the time, I just wanted to go swimming with them. Well, I went swimming with my brothers and Lord and behold, uh, one particular person, uh, a young man, pushed my brother in the water. Well, when he pushed my brother in the water, my brother uh, fell off the dock, and none of us could swim at the time, and uh, my brother fell in the water, and of course, panic took place, and then when panic took place, uh, we couldn't find my brother. And, um, and lo and behold, uh, coming to find out that, of course, that day my brother drowned and so forth, but he was right under the place where we were standing. I mean, he, he, he had, the, the currents had pushed him right underneath there and he was trapped underneath there. So for years, I walked around angry. I walked around mad. You know, you know, she talk about an angry black, black woman. I was an angry black man, man. I walked around mad all the time. And you know, over, over a period of time, I thought uh, that the situation had dissipated in my life. You know, I had been in the Air Force by this time, because that's when I was a young kid. I was about in first grade. By this time, I've been in the Air Force, man, 15, 16 years. And I thought I had forgiven the person. I'll never forget, I turn on the television, and guess who's on a major television show? The person who pushed my brother off the side of the, uh, of, of the dock into the water. Man, I had so much anger come up on the inside of me. Man, I just, oh my goodness, you know, I, I, I told my wife at the time, I mean, I, I, you know, I just couldn't control my anger. You know, I, I was preaching by that time, and I, I wanted to cuss. I wanted to just, go, I mean, I had just, a, uh, uh, just the, the anger just going all off on the inside of me. And I heard the voice of God say, that's because you hadn't forgiven him. But lo and behold, on that particular day, I made up in my mind that I was going to forgive that person. And I did that day. And let me tell you why I was so happy that it happened that way. Um, because I forgave the person, sincerely forgave the person. And then about two weeks later, I get a call from my dad. And they say, you know what, guess who we, they, they found on the side of the road? Dead. And it was that particular person. And I was so grateful that God allowed me to get that thing right. Because some things you don't want to take to the grave. Listen, I'm going to be talking to you when I come back after this next break. And I'm going to talk to you about what Jesus has to say about forgiveness. I'm going to take you to the word of the Lord. I want you to have the same healing that I have where you can move on in your life, where you don't have to worry about things that's happening in your life and causing things to hold you back up in time like that situation was happening to me. So listen, on my next break, I get back and I want to talk to you about that. We're going to go to the word of the Lord in the book of Matthew. I'll see you on the other side of this break. God bless you.
Well, hello, I'm Pastor Quadrilla and Thomas of Faith Worship Center Church, and thank you for tuning in. We're excited about what God is doing at our ministry. With our women's ministry particularly, we have an exciting event that I'd love for you to be a part of. It's our annual mother-daughter luncheon. It's going to be one of the most exquisite, informative, and refreshing times of the year. So if you'll contact our church, you'll be able to get all the information because we want to see you and your daughter there. God bless you. Hey, thank you. And I know you enjoyed those announcements that's coming up at the Faith Worship Center Church. And we love to see you at our church. But listen, I want to go back into the word of the Lord and just kind of pick up where we were on my last break. You know, I was telling you about situations that happened in my family. And I know we all can probably swap stories about what goes on in our life because all of us, uh, regardless of who you are, you have what's called life situations. When life situations happen, uh, you don't control those things. It just happened in life. You're going on with your life and all of a sudden things happen. And then when those things happen, then we get to a point uh, of stagnation. And that's what we got to do today. We got to stop the stagnation process. Now, listen, I want to go to Matthew chapter number um, 18, Matthew chapter number 18. And uh, in Matthew chapter number 18, something very interesting happens um, because the apostle Peter, uh, who was Peter at the time before he got that anointing on him and so forth, uh, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 21, it says, uh, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft or how often it says, shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times because, you know, uh, during that particular point in time, Peter says, you know what, let's just go a little bit above and beyond. <laughs> because, listen, the religious leaders at that time were saying, you know what, give them three opportunities. So Peter says, you know what, I've been walking around Jesus. I've, I've kind of experienced Christ. And, you know, let, I tell you what, let's just give him more than three. Let's give him four more. Let's give him seven opportunities. You know, some of us have given people opportunities and say, you know what, if you do it one more time, I'm going to slap your head. <laughs> no, you don't want to slap the head off. You don't want to knock the head off or anything of that nature. But we put restrictions on things. Says, you know what, I can tolerate it, but I won't only tolerate it if you do it look, one more time. And that's going to be the end of this thing. Well, listen, you, look, God, thank God that he didn't do us like that. And that's what the message of, of what Christ was trying to teach the disciples at this particular time, particularly Peter. And it was interesting that he was talking to Peter, man, because Peter was kind of like I was. Man, he was a hot-headed person, you know. Uh, uh, you look, if he would have been living in our day, he would have been one of those people that you ride down the road, and when you see him, you know, he tried to run you off the road and have a bumper sticker on his car that says, I love Jesus, and honk if you love him too. That's the kind of person Peter was, because Peter was, was such an aggressive person. He had a, such an aggressive mentality, and his mentality was one, you know what, look, I'm good with you, look, I'm going to forgive you, but you know what, I ain't going to forget you, and many of us know Peter people like that. But Jesus was trying to teach him a message. Let's look at that again. In Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 21, it says, uh, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall I, uh, my brother sin against me? Didn't say nothing about me sinning against him, but he sinned against me. And that's what happens so many times. We forget about the things. That I wish I had somebody help me preach on that one right there, man. Yeah, we, we forget about what we do to other people. But we remember everything that they have done. Some of you right now that are watching this broadcast right now, come on, if you're in a husband and a wife relationship, look, look, ladies or men, whoever you may be in that relationship, some of y'all can say, you know what, back in 1965, at 11 o'clock, at 2 o'clock in the day, I can remember because my friend Cherie was walking down the street, she had on a blue dress, and that's when you told me, and whatever the person told you, and they offended you, and you still can remember that, and you're keeping track of that thing, and you're wearing this thing as a badge. I can remember, I'm not going to forget, <laughs> oh my God, I'm never going to forget what you've done to me and I'm laughing because this is a painful situation and I got to get you to get smile about this thing because you got to let that thing go today. It's stopping your future. And so Peter, uh, Jesus telling Peter, he said, hey, look, look, come on, Peter, let, let, let's, let's think about this thing for a minute. I know the religious leaders are saying you got to forgive them at least uh, three times. OK, so I know they're saying you got to forgive them three times. That's, maybe that's where the three strike rule comes, where three strikes. Yeah, I don't know if that's credible uh, or not, but, but maybe that's where that came from. I don't know. But Peter says, okay, I'll tell you what, seven times. If they do it to me one time, seven times, uh, then I'm going to forgive him. Well, it was interesting because in another passage, uh, there was a, a, a teaching where Jesus began to teach the disciples. He says, if your brother has an alt against you. Not if you have an alt against your brother, but if you, you if your brother has an alt against you, he says, ye which are spiritual, you got to go and restore that person. That, that, that's what this whole thing is about. It's not about counting up the number of times uh, that, that somebody has done you wrong. It's not about uh, seeing the number of times uh, that a person has done something and then... Um, 
you know, you, you decide you, whether you're going to uh, for, forgive them or not. And, and let, let's, let's talk. I want to make a couple of things clear. If you're watching this broadcast today and you're in a very abusive situation and somebody's putting their hands on you, now, come on. Look, first off, get out of the situation first. I'm not telling you to stay in that situation. I want to make sure we understand that because nobody has a right uh, to put their hands on somebody, to beat them up and all that kind of stuff. Come on, uh, man, you have no right to be slapping that woman. But we live in a time now where woman, you don't have a right to slap that man either. So let, let, let's, let's think about that for a minute. Uh, because Jesus says, if your brother has an ought against you, you got to forgive them. Look, you got to leave your gift at the altar, the scripture says, and then you got to go and restore. But listen, Peter's saying this thing is on the other side now. This person has sinned against me. How often shall I forgive him? He says, till seven times. Now look what Jesus says in verse number 22. Jesus says unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times but until 70 times seven. That's 149 times in one day. In other words, what he's saying, uh, that should not be a limit as to the number of times that you forgive somebody. That should not be a limit to the number of times that you let somebody uh, pass on something in their life. Uh, so many times people give up on their children. They say, you know what, that boy is just so bad or that daughter is just so, so bad. I once heard a story about um, a man who had a situation with his child and, um, and they said, you know what, Look, if you just do it again, we just, we just gonna forget about it. Uh, but it's something about a, a mother who prays for that child. You know, men, we're a little bit different. You know, men, we're going to like, look, I'm going to give him one more time. If you're going to get it right, he got to get his tail up out of here and he got to get out of my house. And it's my house. I'm the man in this house. I wear the britches. I pay all the bills. But that mother, a lot of times, will stay in there and pray for that child. And sometimes, too often, they do it to their detriment. Uh, uh, but in, in, in this particular instance, his mother just prayed for this child and she waited on this child and said, you know what, one day this child is going to be sitting next to me in church. But sure enough, this guy gets up and he grows up in life. He gets in trouble. He goes to jail. He goes to prison. And while in prison, he meets this guy who's a little bit bigger than he is. And this guy who was just a big brute in prison told him one day, said, listen, you're going to sit down right here and we're going to watch this religious broadcast together. They watch that broadcast together. That big old man ends up leading that young man to Christ. And that young man to Christ shows up at church all the time now. Listen, I want you to know that you don't know what God has in store for you. But if you can't forgive that person, you can't move on in life. Well, you, come on, ask me why. Please ask me why. Well, thank you for asking the question. Well, let me tell you why. Because the Bible says that we can't ask for forgiveness for the Father and He won't forgive us unless we forgive somebody else. You got to forgive that person. You got to move on uh, in life with, uh, without a grudge and walking through grudge because on my next break, we're going to talk about uh, some of the things that happens when, when unforgiveness sets in on your heart and I can't let you live a life like that because the Bible says that it's the truth that's going to set you free. Uh, some of you are suffering in your body right now because of unforgiveness and that pain that's causing something in your life and I, and I got to get you free from that thing today. But Jesus says unto them, come on, 149 times in one day or you to, to forgive this person. And I really need you to grasp that in, in your mind because I need you to get over your madness, get over your anger. Uh, yeah, pastor, you don't know what they did. I need you to get over that. I ain't asking you to invite them into your home or anything of that nature. I'm just asking you to forgive them. So on the next turn around this break here, when we come back, I'm going to come back and talk about the effects of unforgiveness, and we're going to move a little bit further. See you on the other side. I want to invite you to our Mother's Day luncheon. This is a time where mother, daughters, or even if you're just a mother and you're out there, or you're a woman that has never been a mother, we want to invite you to join us on May the 13th at 1130 a.m. There is tons of information at fwcsa.org. This is a time where as women, we get to come together. We get to join together as sisters. We're going to have an amazing lunch that will be catered. The entire place of Faith Worship Center will be transformed. If you've never been to one of our events, then you've never experienced it. So you need to come to this event. I promise you the food is always so amazing. And when it comes to door prizes, nobody does door prizes like Faith Worship Center. When I tell you there's been so many businesses that have sown seeds of gift cards, of rings, of diamonds, of gift cards, into Faith Worship Center for this event. It's gonna be an amazing event and we look forward to seeing you there. So if you want more information, head over to fwcsa.org and I'll look forward to seeing you there as my guest.
Hey, this is Pastor Thomas again. Thank you for watching the broadcast. I just wanted to stop in the middle of the broadcast and just kind of share with you something that we've been doing at our church. Uh, we've been giving everybody wristbands in this area of forgiveness just to remind them as they go through their day-to-day -day operations that if there's unforgiveness in their heart, you got to constantly work on that thing to make yourself better. Listen, my special offer today is I want to send you totally free this wristband uh, that says forgiveness on one side and then on the other side it says Matthew 18, 21 and 22. Well, the Lord says, I don't just forgive them for seven times, but I have to forgive that person uh, 490 times in one day. Listen, this is something I want to give to you. I want to share with you. Again, it's totally free. I just need you to pick up the phone and just call our offices. That number is 210-390-1763. Let's go back into the broadcast. Hey, welcome back to the broadcast. Hey, we, we've been talking about it in Matthew chapter number 18. I want to go back and read that one more time for you. It says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall thy brother or my brother sin against me and I forgive him? He says, Till seven times. Look what Jesus says in verse number 22 of Matthew chapter 18. Jesus said unto him, I say unto thee, uh, until seven times. No, not really, he says, but until 70 times 7. So in other words, 149 times you're supposed to forgive this person. Well, listen, let me tell you something. Well, one of the things that uh, I was sitting on the Internet one day, I was preparing for this message, and I was delivering this message at church, and I was, you know, talking about just, just typing in some things, and I wanted to see what were the effects of unforgiveness. I was looking for it on the Internet, typed in one of the search engines and so forth. You know, just coming, just thinking something very profound was going to come up uh, as to the effects of unforgiveness, Think, thinking it was going to be very spiritual. You know, I had got my spiritual hat on and everything, and I'm thinking I'm going to get something spiritual and everything. And then it says, um, unforgiveness kills. So I kept reading the article, and it says, when unforgiveness takes place, it puts a stress on your body. It puts a stress on, listen to what I'm saying. It puts a stress on your body. But when stress is a, comes about, all of a sudden certain things starts happening in your body. It starts being manifested in the flesh. Now look, we are spiritual beings. And because we're spiritual beings and we live in a body uh, and we possess a soul, uh, something uniquely happens when, when unforgiveness uh, hang, hangs around on the inside of us. When we allow unforgiveness to hang around on the inside of us, come on, your stress level goes up. Come on, you know how it is when you get around that person or just even thinking about that subject, it causes your stress level to go up. And, and what the study showed in that particular article that I was reading, it said that's one of the reasons why we have a high blood pressure and we have a diabetes and all this other kind of stuff because of the level of stress of unforgiveness. I was so shocked. These were clinical physicians who were, who, who were, were making this point. And I was thinking, you know, this is something about an article from, you know, some random preacher or something uh, of that. But no, this, is, this were doctors who were, who were in the medical in the practice and they were talking about the effects of stress on the body uh, because of unforgiveness. You got to forgive that person. Some of you right now, you're going to eat yourself into oblivion. Look, Lay's potato chips, I love them. They ain't that good though. Okay, and, and me, you know, uh, uh, when, when I'm going through this t stressful t situation, my, my, my wife tells me, she says, I sit there and I just bite on that finger right there. I got the mark to show you where, I, where I've been biting on my finger. All of us have something, some kind of vice that we fall up into. Some of your vices, uh, maybe you that are watching me right now, you've gone through this thing where, look, nobody understand. So I'm just going to drink this thing. I just gonna have one drink. And then that next drink, because you think it's going to heal the pain, you'll take another drink. And then the next thing you know, you know, uh, that mad dog. Uh, OK, so maybe you don't drink mad dog. That's from from where I'm from. <laughs> maybe that martini or whatever you've been drinking. Next thing you know, you're drunk because you're trying to forget uh, that, that voice that's going off in your head. That's causing that anger. That's causing the stress that's on your body. For others, look, look it may not be that some of you have turned to drugs. You, you, you may have uh, you, you may be smoking weed and uh, something of that nature. And look, and you ain't got glaucoma. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whoosa, I gotta get back in the spirit now. Yeah, you're smoking weed and you may be doing some other drug because you're trying to heal the pain of some unforgiveness that goes on. Listen, let me tell you something. I had to discover that when unforgiveness was in my life and I was carrying that thing, I had to be able to turn this thing over to God. I had to turn it over to God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse number 14, one of my most favorite scriptures in the, in, in the Bible, it talks about it, uh, how, the bloods, uh, how, the, uh, how the blood of bullocks and goats wouldn't do the things that needed to, to happen. But it says, uh, but the blood of Christ Jesus 
He's talking about the blood of Christ. He says, when it is applied, it, it can cleanse your conscience from all dead works to serve the living God. Come, what do you mean cleanse your conscience? It's kind of like a, a something when you're on your computer and you know you want that document, but you forgot to save it. And because you didn't save it, uh, uh, when you turn it back on, it was gone or it got deleted by accident and you can't find it anymore. That's what happens when it comes with the blood of Jesus. When you apply the blood of Jesus to your life, the blood of Jesus comes and cleanses your conscience. It's like an etching skin. You know an etching sketch where you used to do that thing like that? Some of y'all as old as I am, you know what I'm talking about. But you shake it like that, and then everything that you did on that previously is no longer there. That's what the blood of Christ does. When you apply the blood of Jesus to your life, you, look, it, it, it comes in, I, I, and I can't tell you how it's done, man, because if I knew how it was done, I would probably put it in a pill and we could take it, okay? But, but I can't do that. But when you apply the blood of Jesus, well, Pastor, how do I apply the blood of Jesus? You just say, listen, it's just a matter of words coming out of your mouth. Father, I apply the blood of Jesus to my life. And when you you do that, come on, he has a way of going inside of your inward man, talking about that person. Because for some of you, you dressed up on the outside. You look good on the outside. You got the finest of clothes on the outside. You're wearing your, your, your Louboutins, you know, the red bottoms on it. I can color you. I can save you some money. But uh, uh, that's another story. That's another message for another time. Uh, some of you got your, your best suit on. You got your best makeup on. You're driving the, the, the best cars possible and everything. But, but you're still hurting on the inside because of unforgiveness. That's not the way you get rid of unforgiveness, by I'm going to show them. I'd buy a golly and doggone it. I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them that I can live. I'm gonna, man, I'm going to show. No, that ain't the way you do it. The way you do it is by applying the blood of Jesus Christ. Just because you get back at somebody, that may be a motivation to accomplish a goal, but that's not the way to get rid of that inward pain that's going on on the inside. You got to literally, honestly, forgive that person. You say, well, how, do I, how, how can I do that? Well, you, you have to follow the, mo the model of Christ. As I said, you apply that blood. What blood? Why is that so important? Because you remember Jesus hanging on the cross. And I know some of you do because we, we've been in this resurrection season, this Easter season. Uh, and, and, and the thing that he says that was so very pivotal to our time, he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He was able to forgive them. And that same blood that was shared, shed on the cross for him, uh, for, for us, excuse me, uh, that blood can be applied to your life. And when you apply that blood to your life by just literally just saying, Father, I apply the blood, the blood of Jesus to my life and I apply it to my mind. I, I, I ask for forgiveness of this person. Then listen, God is able to move that hurt. Come on. You may have the memory, but you won't have the pain that's associated with it. Yeah, you may have been divorced, but you won't have the pain that's associated with it. Yeah, you, somebody may have, have, have done something to your family, but you won't have the pain that's associated with it. Listen, I got something I prepared for you. I know you've seen the, what I've been talking about uh, uh, on, on, my, on my commercials today, but I, 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 one I keep on my arm all the time, uh, and I keep it as a reminder. It says forgiveness, and I, and I keep it on my arm uh, because I don't never want to forget uh, to forgive somebody. Uh, I, I don't ever want to get to a point where I can't forgive somebody or, or let that thing grow from a little seed, and now it's a big tree, and it's just growing out of control, and I'm all just all whacked out. Can I say whacked out on TV? Well, it's a little bit too late because I already said it. Uh, yeah, but you all whacked out on the inside because of something that was so small in the beginning and now it has grown into something so large. Or maybe it was something so large in the beginning now it's just, just grown all out of proportion. You got to forgive them. Listen, recently on the news, there was a situation where uh, a man was going through town and he uh, was going through and he just uh, inadvertently picked out this one guy and shot him. And when he shot him, a guy was on his way to services and so forth. Many of you have seen the news story. But what was so powerful to me was when the family says, you know what, we're hurting right now, but we forgive the young man who did it. That's got to be our mentality. Well, listen, I love you so much and I love you dearly. Pastor Kay and I look forward to seeing you at the Faith Worship Center Church. So the next time, listen, I want to see you in the place. Come visit us. We look forward to seeing you. May God bless you is my prayer. Well, hello. I'm Pastor Quadrilyn Thomas of Faith Worship Center Church. And thank you for tuning in. We're excited about what God is doing at our ministry. With our women's ministry particularly, we have an exciting event that I'd love for you to be a part of. It's our annual mother-daughter luncheon. It's going to be one of the most exquisite, informative, and refreshing times of the year. So if you'll contact our church, you'll be able to get all the information because we want to see you and your daughter there. God bless you.
Hey, this is Pastor Thomas again. Thank you for watching the broadcast. I just wanted to stop in the middle of the broadcast and just kind of share with you something that we've been doing at our church. Uh, we've been giving everybody wristbands in this area of forgiveness just to remind them as they go through their day-to-day -day operations that if there's unforgiveness in their heart, you got to constantly work on that thing to make yourself better. Listen, my special offer today is I want to send you totally free this wristband uh, that says forgiveness on one side and then on the other side it says Matthew 18, 21 and 22. Well, the Lord says, I don't just forgive them for seven times, but I have to forgive that person uh, 490 times in one day. Listen, this is something I want to give to you. I want to share with you. Again, it's totally free. I just need you to pick up the phone and just call our offices. That number is 210-390-1763.